So Waldorf education is an educational philosophy that originated in Austria and Germany in the 1920s. And it's focused around a developmental picture of the student and the developing human being. And we work in the Waldorf School to address all of the underlying capacities of the developing human being. Their thinking, their feeling, and their ability to engage their will. And by creating an environment that really allows that creativity and intellectual ability to thrive, we help them to become the person that we hope that they would like to be in the world in the future. Waldorf schools, uh, like state schools, um, you know, we teach reading, we teach math, uh, we teach science, and we teach history, you know, social studies. So we teach the same subjects, but we teach them in a different way. And we, um, so, you know, the idea is that there's a certain time when those subjects are really appropriate, and there's a time when it's not, the child's not really ready for that. And I think we pay a lot of attention to that. Art is not just something that you add on to, you know, you get to have an art period, but actually all kinds of art, drama, speech, painting, sculpture, that all is part of the curriculum. That researching Waldorf graduates is, is, uh, is a good place to look how they turn out in the end, because it's very interesting. Um, they end up in a wide variety of fields, many of them, even though we don't emphasize uh, computers early on, many of our more recent graduates end up in technology type uh, careers and do very well at that, and they bring their creativity to that. It makes sense to have a curriculum that fits this general picture of child development. It makes sense to have an idea of the order in which you'll introduce ideas. Educationally, that's plain to me. What really surprises me is how it affects the individual children who are in every class. The way each kid, even though they are completely unique individuals, finds something that they're just harmonious with every single year. Steiner's ideas about young children is that they need to be um, playing, moving their limbs, running outside in nature. They're exposed to, you know, good, good, beautiful language, beautiful stories, so that they're hearing uh, beautiful words. Um, but there's no real formal education because uh, the idea is that they're not really ready for that. They're really working on their limbs and uh, their young bodies in a way that you don't want to bring in academics too soon because that really disrupts what's the natural order for a child. Early childhood is important because it's the foundation of everything else we do. Uh, those early childhood years of exploring in the world, being open to experience, finding creativity and imagination, they create the foundation that is used later in life for deep understanding of challenging concepts. So for example, the students who play outside a lot in their early childhood years, who learn not to be bored when there's nothing handed them to do, who learn to look carefully at every rock in a stream bed. Those students, when they are 13 and 14, and they're in the upper grades, they're the same ones who I can show a physics demonstration to that has something as complex as the relationship between electricity and magnetism. And I don't say anything about what the concept is, I show them a demonstration and they take it apart piece by piece. They'll tell me in detail exactly what happened and then they reach those conclusions on their own. And it is a remarkable thing to see. It's the most important years of a child's uh, formation of how they feel about the world, how the world is to them. Is it, is it a beautiful place? Is it a, a safe place? Is there love around them? But by seven, when the teeth have come out, then, or the baby teeth have come out, then that's the time to start more formal uh, educational, you know, tasks. So the curriculum works 
by having a class of students that stay together for eight years ideally, and they stay ideally with the same teacher in the grades. Uh, we teach an unfolding curriculum that meets the children where they are. So we look at what changes does a student, does a person go through between seven and eight, between eight and nine, nine and 10. And so for each of those years in the lower school, we take how they're developing and the questions that they're gonna face, and we bring our curriculum to meet them there. Many people ask, well, what if you don't get along with a child in your class? Because you have them for eight years, and I've never really found that that's a problem with any teacher I know. It's more like having your own child. They are your child. They're going to be with you for many years as they grow up, and so you, you work with the child that you have. You don't say, well, I hope I just get through this year with this child. I don't have to work with them any longer, and then they're going to get passed on to another teacher. I think what really makes Waldorf education different is how we teach them and why we teach what we teach when we do. How we teach them is different because everything is woven together. So the teaching of reading in first grade happens not just by holding up a letter and drilling it in language arts class and then walking off to math and doing something else. The teaching of reading happens in an integrated way in every single class of first grade. So you may be learning letter sounds through poetry, through song, through math exercises, through writing, through reading, and through drawing. Our goal is not to put in poor information in, but really to help the individual student become the best student possible for them, best human being possible. The Waldorf education has the child just working for the enjoyment of the process of doing, of doing um, activities with their hands or learning information or singing or um, gardening. It's just for the, the natural human purpose to do those. I think the teachers here are the most committed and engaged people I have ever encountered in my life. Um, it's amazing to see the time, the energy, the love that they put into what we do every single day. One of the most interesting things to me about the faculty members who work here is that Waldorf schools by design are faculty administered. The faculty is involved in the administration. So that level of commitment, engagement, desire to be part of not just coming in and punching a clock and doing my work every day, but really working to understand the students in your care every day and the, the school as a whole. That's a pretty remarkable group of people to gather together with on a daily. Um. If, you, if a parent were nervous about sending their child to a Waldorf school, I'd say come and take a look, you know, visit the classes, visit the early childhood, visit the upper grades, see what's going on so you can really, because Generally, parents are, are worried that uh, academically it's not going to be the same, you know. The, their child won't be able to pass tests. And, uh, you know, so take a look at what we're doing. And, you, and I think you'll see that the caliber is very high. Our alumni are, are really our best testament to what we do. Uh, our alumni are varied in their engagement in the world. They are free-thinking, creative people. They represent the vast spectrum of different types of professions. And yet, every alumni that I encounter from our, from our school or from other Waldorf schools, the thing that I would say that they have in common is that they have a really good sense of themselves. They tend to be pursuing their own interests, their own drives and desires. They don't seem to be wondering about their place in the world. They seem to kind of know who they are. 